Hello everybody. In this video we're going to start doing some basic analysis on some uh, simple circuits and our goals are to gain some familiarity with the independent and dependent sources that we talked about in the previous video and also to analyze some electrical characteristics, characteristics of basic circuits. So let's dive right into it. I have an example here and it, it says calculate the power supplied or absorbed by each element in this uh, circuit. So we first got to remember, and actually, uh, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, pause the video and give it a try, and then I'll talk about this. Okay, so we first have to remember that we have two different types of power supplied to these basic elements. Either it's going to be supplied or it's going to be absorbed. If it's supplied, it means that the element is behaving as if it's a power supply, like a voltage supply or uh, like a current supplier. If it's absorbed, it's like kind of like an kind of like a resistor. It's uh, it's uh, dissipating power basically, and the way to do that is to remember that with due due to passive sign convention, if you have some element and there's a voltage drop across it and there's a current flowing from positive to negative, that power is defined to be positive I times positive voltage, so that's going to be a positive power meaning the power is being uh, absorbed by this element. So for example, it's like a resistive load dissipating power, so that's absorbing power. If on the other hand you have again another uh, element, and these are shaped like this to show that we don't know what they are. We're not trying to uh, indicate that we know what they are, we're just trying to indicate it based on the characteristics of the voltage current and the power across it. So in this other example, then if you have a positive here and negative here, so the voltage is dropping this in this direction towards the upward direction, and you have a current flowing from here to from the northward to the from the upward to the downward, it's as if this current is gain it's as if you're gaining potential as we go from this point to this point. We're gaining voltage from negative to positive. So this also looks like a battery, because if you think about it, conventional current flows from uh the positive to the rest of the circuit for example here you have positive currents going this way so this guy is supplying it and it's also indicated that it's a voltage source that there's no surprise it's the currents going from the positive towards the negative in the rest of the circuit and in this example if you look at it this current is going in this direction and it looks kind of like a battery where the positive negative and the currents going this way so it's supplying power therefore it is losing power so those are the examples to remember and to live by before solving this problem. So let's look at it then. We have we need four different powers here. Power one, power two, power three, power four. The first one is the first one is across this uh, voltage source and let's just go ahead and apply our uh, using conventional uh, current and um, the passive side convention. The first power dissipated is going to be The current going through this element and the voltage across it. So the voltage across it is uh, 20 volts, positive 20 volts, and the current is uh, leaving it. Therefore, that's a negative 5 amps. Because remember, if you look at this top one, if the current's coming towards the positive, uh, the the voltage drop, that's a uh, positive power, meaning power is being absorbed by the element. But if the current is leaving from the positive side going from negative to positive then that element is supplying power for example in this case currents going from that 5 amps that's indicated here is going from the negative to the positive and onward therefore this guy is supplying power so it uh, has 12 volts 20 volts across it and it is losing uh, 5 amps going away from it so we have a negative 100 volts times amps is watts so this guy is uh, losing or supplying 100 watts power 2 is going to be this one across this element what we see is that there's a 12, a 12 volt uh, voltage drop across this element and there's a 5 amps flowing through it and this follows the passive sign convention so therefore it's going to be a positive current and a positive voltage as you can see from this example 12 volts multiplied by 5 amps and we get 60 watts so this 
element is uh, or dissipating 60 watts it's using up 60 watts so let's see power 3 is going to be the power dissipated across or used by uh, this element over here and that is you can see the voltage drop is 8 volts and the current is flowing from the high to low which agrees with the passive sign convention meaning it's a positive current so you have 8 volts times 6 amps is 48 volts times amps watts units of power that's that one and let's see power 4 now here's the tricky part what we have here if you remember we talked about independent and dependent sources this guy over here is an independent source because we drew it as a circle so it's it's going to keep 20 volts across the terminals of it regardless of what current is going through or regardless of what's going on in the rest of the circuit this one though is a dependent uh, current source meaning uh, or because it's a diamond shape as indicated here and it's going to supply current uh, and it's going to depend on some other variable in the circuit and we can see this says it should say 0.2 or uh, one fifth of I and I is over here so we have the current flowing through this guy let's call it lowercase i it's going to be 0.2 times current I which is 5 amps well 0.2 is also the same thing as 1 fifth times 5 amps is equal to 1 amp so we have 1 amp going in this direction as indicated over here 1 amp okay that's cool and everything but to find the power we need the voltage across an element would you like to pause the video and try to think how can we find a voltage across this okay well what we know is that for parallel elements in a given circuit uh, they share the same voltage you can see here that we had 20 volts some current was uh, current was going through here and there was a voltage drop across this element so we have 12, 12 volts drop here and now what's le left in order to follow the conservation of uh, energy or Kirchhoff's voltage law the remaining voltage that's left so 20 minus 12 is 8 the remaining 8 volts must be across these guys and the reason I know is across both of them is because these guys are in parallel. Remember, elements in parallel share the same volts. And we can see also here that the positive and negative is uh, if you're measuring the voltage across this element. So this element must also, due to the parallel elements rule, uh, that's not a formal name, but uh, because of that rule, it's going to be 8 volts across this guy with the same orientation as this one. So positive here, negative here let's do a thought experiment if you had a resistor here could we still say that there's an 8 volt drop across this element the answer is no because if you had a resistor here for example there would be a still an 8 volt drop across this element but then here there would be some voltage drop across the resistor and some voltage drop across this element over here so we would not be able to tell unless someone told us the voltage drop across the resistor suppose it was 3 volts then we would say okay this was 8 volts we lost 3 volts when we go in this way so this must be a 5 volt drop across this guy. Since we don't know that though, we won't be able to say it. Anyway, that was just an example to illustrate the idea here. Okay, so we know the water drop, the positive, the polarity of the water drop. So it's going to be positive here, negative here. And the current though is flowing uh, from the negative towards the positive and from the south to north. And looking at passive sign convention, what we get is that we have a uh, let's see positive voltage so we have uh, we said 8 volts multiplied by current leaving so that is negative 1 amp and we get negative 8 watts meaning this element is uh, supplying uh, power and we can see that makes sense because it's the currents leaving from the positive terminal of this element so that means it's kinda of like a battery right now it's supplying power also makes sense because it is a current source so uh, it should be supplying current okay now if you follow the conservation of energy what it states is that if you sum up all the changes in power in a circuit that is not being influenced by external noise or interference in other words as we said many times a circuit that has no magnetic change in magnetic flux to where energy can uh, come into the circuit because if this is met, if there's no external magnetic flux change 
that is giving electromotive force or voltages uh, into the circuit, the sum of the power uh, loss or power gain across any element must equal uh, zero. So let's see if this is uh, true. Uh, this is true, but let's see if our problem was solved correctly. We have minus 100 watts. Minus 100 watts plus 60 watts plus six, uh, 48 watts minus 8 watts. So I'm going to calculate this. What I'm going to get is the negative 8 watts cancels the 8 over here. So we get uh, we get a positive 40 watts. We have a positive 60 watts and a negative 100 watts. That's going to be a 60 and 40 are going to be 100 and negative 100 plus 100 is going to be 0 watts so the total power or the conservation of energy is obeyed here therefore we can say that at least in in terms of uh, conservation of energy we did the problem correctly